Hello there guys and welcome back to the FIFA 21 career mode with Real Madrid and today we've got episode 11 of the career mode. Now a big episode today, Ronaldo returns to the Bernabeu. So as you guys seen in the last episode, we face Juventus next in the Champions League. The first leg being at home at the Bernabeu. Now I can imagine Ronaldo will be playing that game and as you've seen in the last episode, the top scorers, Ronaldo is currently the top scorer in the Champions League. So I'm not looking forward to his return, if I'm going to be honest, if he's in the form he is in against us. So, the first game in today's episode will be Atletico Bilbao, who are in 13th place in the league at the moment. We're facing them at home, and then followed up by that, we're facing uh, Valencia, sorry, away from home in the uh, La Liga. And then to end the episode off, we're playing against Juventus at home in the Bernabeu in the Champions League. So before we go any further then, let's reply to some of your comments from the previous episodes then. And also guys, we're back now to normal uploading and not pre-recording for the future anymore. So don't forget, leave your comments down below. They will be featured in the next episode. But anyway, into the first comment here from Omar saying, Good job, keep on. Remove Marcelo off the bench and put Rodrigo so you can have more options on the attack because Vinicius Jr. isn't so well on the right wing. Now I agree with this and I've gone ahead and made that change just because Vinicius Jr. a lot of the time does come on and I move Mbappe up front, but I've took Marcelo off because it's very rare I do change the left back position in a game. So I've gone ahead and I've got Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. on the bench for the starting 11. The next comment here then coming in from Angelo saying sign Jude Bellingham from Dortmund. He's 17 and has potential. And obviously, most people know about this guy, and I definitely know about him moving to Dortmund from Birmingham. So I've gone ahead and added him to the shortlist. Whether we'll sign him or not is a different story, just because I didn't want it to feel a bit too unrealistic. But then to be fair, Real Madrid being the team that they are, they always sign the best and most talented upcoming players in the world. So then the next comment and the final comment coming from Zupin. Um, you could sign Sadio Mane and sell Hazard. He's been linked to Real Madrid numerous times and is a monster. He could set, the exam uh, set an example for the likes of Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo to grow and evolve their game. Now I agree with this as well. Um, just because obviously Hazard last episode read an offer in from Chelsea for like something crazy like 107 million and I feel silly to not accept it but at the same time Hazard does add a lot to the team and with little time I don't think we could have replaced him with Sadio Mane and it's if Liverpool would have let him go as well um, but maybe this is something to look at for next season let me know down below if he was to sell Hazard at the start of next season who should I bring in I've had shouts of Sadio Mane, Sterling let me know down below your thoughts in the comments one last thing then before we go any further in today's episode, if you guys do enjoy it, don't forget hit the like button down below on the video. I do appreciate all your guys' support on these episodes. It's absolutely blowing me away, all the support and the comments and the likes and everything. So don't forget, hit the like button as well and also the subscribe button and a little bell next to it to be notified of when one of these videos goes live onto YouTube. So I've just seen this then in the club news section, Hazard grabs January Player of the Month award. And this is what I'm saying, this guy has so much to offer still. This season, I don't want to cast him aside and bring a replacement in just yet because of how well he's playing. Here's the league table then to start today's episode. You can see Barcelona still at the top of the table on 59 points. We're in second on 55. Uh, Atletico Madrid um, only three points behind. There's obviously a game in hand at the moment on 52 points. We'll take a quick look down the table. As you can see, Atletico Bilbao in 13th at the moment who are playing next. And also uh, Valencia who are in. Just double check now. I think 7th place. Yeah. 7th place, so two big games and we need all 6 points in them in today's episode. So here's how the two teams line up then before going into the game. You can see we're going with our strongest starting 11. Don't want to run any risks, want to get off to a good start in today's episode. Hopefully all 3 points in the game. That's how Atletico Bilbao line up. Now let's get into the game. Harlan playing it through. Here we go, Tony Kroos. Goes for the shots and Tony Kroos makes it 1-0 in this game. 11 minutes in. And we're already 1-0 up in this game thanks to our number 8. Now we did have an offer come in for him in January. I can't mind off who off, um, you know, which team offered in for him. But we definitely weren't selling him and he makes it 1-0 in this game against Athletic Bilbao. Through, there we go, Hazard is through. Come on, smash this one in the back of the net and the goalkeeper's got to that one. But we got ourselves a corner, starting really well in this game I've got to say. Let's get the cross in from Hazard. Decent header on it, maybe. And oh, we just can't get the header. Can we win that ball? And we can't. But it's my first game on today on FIFA 21. So I was a little bit nervous how it would go. But so far, we're playing it really well. Here we go, Valverde. Maybe out on the right-hand side. There we go, down. Mbappe to Haaland. Um, to Hazard. Once, oh, Mbappe, sorry. My mistake. And Mbappe just couldn't get it past the goalkeeper. Hazard, low cross in towards Haaland. Just a finishing touch. 
and it hits the post. Can you believe it? We're almost getting the second goal in this game. We're getting close to it. Maybe let's go again. Mendy plays it inside. Haaland looking for a bit of space. Maybe Haaland can get it. And the touch just wasn't there. And also one thing I've done, and I've seen it in the comments, was put Mendy as a CDM. And I've done that. I've got him training in the development planet to try and make him into a CDM. Because I thought it's not a bad idea, idea, to be fair. So I've gone ahead and made that change. Oh, here we go. Haaland. Great chance here to make it 2-0. And there we go. Haaland making it 2-0 in this game. Him and Mbappe are just incredible to use on FIFA 21. As you can imagine, some of the highest rate players on the game. But having them two on the team really is unstoppable. The amount of pace they have, how clinical they are in front of goal. You can see here, he gets into a bit of a kerfussle, but wins the ball at the end of it. And fires it home there, past the goalkeeper. And that's now three goals in the league for him. Oh, Bill Bow are going to be able to score one here. Poor defending, and Couture straight at his body. But we got the save in the end. 67 minutes now played. Try to get on the counter-attack here again. Haaland trying to send Hazard. And Hazard has got the pace, but I don't think he's going to get any end of this. And is he? And okay, he wins it back. And no, the defender got it in the end. Oh, here we go, Mbappe. Chance to make it 3-0. A little chip over the top. And he was offside in the end. But uh, you can see there, 90 minutes now, plus a minute added on. They're going to make a change. But uh, we should be getting all three points. If not should be getting, but we will be getting all three points in this game. Here we go, Mbappe. Let's go for a volley. Why not? And straight at the goalkeeper. But the ref is going to blow it. Surely the ref is going to blow it. And there we go. We get all three points in our first game of the episode. Also, a 2-0 win against Atletico Bilbao. So here's how the league table is looking after that game. Barcelona still at the top on 62 points. We're behind them on 58. Let's go Madrid on 52 and Villarreal on 43. Now, if I had to make a quick prediction on the top four, let me know your predictions on the top four down below. But barring the top two, obviously it all depends now if Barcelona drop points. So I'm going to say top two, obviously definitely going to be Real Madrid or Barcelona, I'm guessing, unless we have some really bad form or Barcelona have some bad form. But I'm going to go Real Madrid, Barcelona... Atletico Madrid and then I don't know it's a tough one Villarreal on 43 points Alaves on 41 and Valencia on 39 I've got to say I think Villarreal might just squeeze in the top four this year it wouldn't surprise me though if Alves Alaves sorry um do make it into the top four into the press conference then before the game against Valencia let's have a see what if they say will Hazard get his chance I'm going to say I have to rotate the squad because I'm going to play our future 11 in this game. A little bit of a tough one because we're facing Valencia. Not the worst team in the league by a long shot. I think they're in 7th place at the moment or 6th. So, they're having a pretty decent season now. To play our future 11 is going to be tough. But I want our starting 11 players to be rested for the game against Juventus. Have you any chance of beating Valencia? Uh, we'll be competitive, I promise. A bit of a weird question. Of course we want to beat them. And uh, everybody at Real Madrid enjoyed that comfortable 2 the goal win in your last game. Uh, will the opposition be worrying about you? Um, the lads are in good shape. Like I say, a little bit worried about the future 11 because of the game last episode. I think it was last episode where we lost 4-1, was it? 3-1, something ridiculous. But uh, hoping to have a lot better game today. So in the last game we just played against Atletico Bilbao, something did come up. The commentators were talking about Sergio Ramos. How he aims to end his career at Real Madrid. Um, now I was a little bit cautious. Couldn't really hear the whole thing. But I was thinking. Is he retiring or anything? I've gone to the squad hub. And you can see he actually is retiring. At the end of the season. There's no way of talking him out of it. Or anything like that. Which is annoying. Because he's still 87 rated. You know what I mean? I'm sure he could last another two seasons. But he's wanting to retire. At the end of this season. So let me know down below. Who should replace him? Does Oppenmeccano go ahead and replace him? He's only 81 rated. He might be a little bit higher. Towards the end of the season. But does he automatically go into the starting 11? Or do we go out and sign someone else to come into the starting 11? Let me know down below in the comments. So here's how the two teams that line up then for our next game against Valencia away from home. And you can see, I'm just looking over to the Valencia team. And we've got Milic, I'm pretty sure is the guy from Napoli. Um, they have just signed. And I'm pretty sure as well, Captain Keane. I'm pretty sure that is Michael Keane. I'm sure we've seen that in the January transfer window. Michael Keane moving to Valencia. So an interesting lineup. A few new additions. But uh, hopefully this future 11 should be able to get the win. Oh, here we go. Valencia off to a good start. Militao just getting in there. And obviously Valencia having the home advantage in this one. So they're going to be playing a lot of attacking football. So maybe we can just get on a few counter-attacks like we are now. Emerson making his way forward. Can he get the pass off? And he can. Rodrigo to Jovic who gets round the defender well. Looking for a pass inside to Odegaard. And Odegaard is there. 
and at the back post to make it 1-0, 11 minutes in, I did not expect to score there at all, but I think that's how we're going to have to play in this game, on the counter attack, defend well and then hit him on the counter, Odegaard scoring quite a few goals this season, getting some good positions, you can see him there, running, getting there for the pass and he fires it home, makes it 1-0 and that's now three goals for him as well in this season. Oh, so you can see there in the corner, Luka Modric hanging up his boots. Okay, we're getting... Okay, need to defend. Oh, from Meccano saving us there. Can't even get that one cleared. But I don't know if you've just seen it then, but about Modric wanting to retire as well. Jovic, great ball over the top. Vinicius Jr. Okay, cut that one. Oh, I just couldn't cut it inside. But uh, again, another player that wants to retire now, Modric. And obviously, we've got a few replacements in store as well for him. But uh, bloody hell, everybody wants to retire. Emerson, look, chip inside, the header from Jovic. And it causes the goalkeeper to get us a corner, 29 minutes in. And can we get a header on this? It's been nice to score from a corner, and nope. Still waiting to score from a corner. Uh, well, a header from the corner anyway. But um, can we get, I was looking for a pass straight through the middle there, really. Caught a lot of people out, but there we go through. Modric, get the other pass off. Jovic, can you get it past the goalkeeper? The ball's still loose, the pass, and oh my god, Militao. Oh no, Valencia cut us right open here, and Emerson, great block there, but it goes out for a corner. The threat isn't over as of yet. The corner's going to come in here. I hope to go into half time at 1 0 up, that'd be nice. The cross comes in, and Militao to clear. Odegaard, okay, I thought he was going to pass it to someone. Obviously not, and they've still got the ball here. Just got to. Keen as well on the ball. Okay, ball straight through. Over Meccano, great block, and he's having a great game so far. And there we go, into half time, 1 0 up in this game. Odegaard down the line, Vinicius Jr. once again in plenty of space. A little chip over to Jovic, who heads it home. And there we go, we get the two goals now in this game, and we should be securing all three points away from home with the future 11, which is nice. And Jovic scores another goal as well. I think now he's 82 rated, so he's got up two overalls since playing him quite regularly since, I think, what is it, December time? Vinicius Junior, loads of pace, little chip over, and we scored this one a few times, but Jovic heads it home. And I don't really want to make any changes, that's his third goal in the league, but I don't really want to make any changes um, just with Juventus coming up next. I sort of want the starting 11 to be fully fit. Oh no, Valencia might just pull one back, and they almost do in literally dying moments of the game. And this was very close. Defence more or less wide open for the shot. But the shot goes wide. And Lunin wasn't really tested. And it is Michael Keane um, that's coming off for them. We should be, the ref should be loading full-time whistle now. I'm just going to, okay. I didn't expect it to end up there. Ref blows it anyway. And we get the two, I'm about to say the two points. Then we get the three points in this game. And another 2-0 win in this episode. So, yeah, as you can see, Luka Modric there wanting to retire at the end of the season. 35 years of age, 86 overall. But luckily, just luckily, we got Valverde here. 86 overall as well. Looking up three this season so far. You can see his squad role at the moment is rotation. So, I think next season, when Modric has retired, we will offer him a new contract and probably offer him a squad role of important or more likely crucial. So here's the league table then, because obviously we don't have any more games coming up in the league. So this is how the league table is going to end at today's episode. Barcelona still four points ahead of us. No ground that's sort of made up there, which is disappointing. But as long as we keep winning games, I'm pretty sure there'll be a point somewhere on the road. Hopefully that Barcelona drop points. Just hoping that they do at some point. Atletico Madrid in third place. Villarreal in fourth place. Like I said, at fourth, fifth and sixth spot just might change between now and the end of the season. I'm thinking, obviously, Villarreal now four points ahead of Alaves. But uh, I've just got a feeling it might change between now and the end. We'll go down, take a look at the rest of the teams in the table as well before we go on into our next game against Juventus. So here are the teams then that are left in the Champions League for the round of 16. You can see Atletico Madrid getting a 2-0 win there against Dortmund in their first leg and Chelsea and Inter drawing in their first game. Obviously, us against Juventus, Lazio against Bayern, Bayern Munich, uh, Bayern Munich, sorry, yeah, Barcelona against Man City, Atalanta, PSG, Liverpool against a team that I cannot pronounce, unfortunately, but they're getting a pretty easy draw there, in my opinion, and then Porto against Sevilla, but it's going to be interesting, we've got a tough matchup here against Juventus, let's see if Ronaldo is going to be playing. So here we are then, here's how the two teams that line up against each other, and you can see 
Juventus going for a pretty, not unusual team, but Alexandro at Cam is not a, a normal sight for me, put it that way. Obviously, Ronaldo and Martial up front, Martial who they brought in, I think, in the summer, if I remember correctly. And obviously, Thomas Muller, I think they brought in in January, if, if, if memory serves me right, you're playing him on the right hand side. So, pretty interesting lineup there. Thomas Muller, who I'm pretty sure isn't the fastest. On the game so maybe we can expose that side of the pitch just maybe but Ronaldo on Martial up front is going to be dangerous plus Alexandro in behind them like I said I've never seen that before but it could work for them obviously they're doing well at the moment as well we're going with our strongest lineup you can see that you know the future 11 hasn't fully recovered but there is a few players there that we can bring on if needed to off the bench but let's get into the game and see how we do and see how Ronaldo does on his return against Real Madrid here we go then into the game against Juventus, such a big game this one and we need to get off to a good start because our record in the group stage wasn't great at all. We got off to a good start in the group stage but once we faced into Milan we obviously didn't do too well against them. Now we're against the bigger team in Juventus. Now here we go, down the left hand side here, Hazard, not too much space but uh, something, maybe can work a little cross in and he's still got the ball, another little cross inside, just couldn't get it over to Haaland there but a good start in this game. Here we go, Mbappe, Mbappe's through, Mbappe to make it 1-0, and he does. And there we go, 11 minutes in, Mbappe, the new number 7, I've got to say, for Real Madrid, makes it 1-0 in this game. I really didn't think that was going to be a goal, I thought it was offside for a start, and that's why I weren't talking, because I thought, oh, it's offside, you can see, and I thought he's offside, and then I thought, okay, we're playing on, and he smashes it in the back net, and he's got that pace, and he just makes it 1-0. In this game, I hate to say it. I hate to see the sight, if I'm honest, of Mbappe making it 1 0 and he's the new number seven and he's facing up against uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I hate to see it, I've got to say. It feels horrible, but uh, I guess in a sort of a nasty way, but uh, in an honest way, it is the future now. And Mbappe does wear the number seven with pride um, against Ronaldo. There we go, Haaland looking for Hazard and. Haaland, can you make that run into the box? And he can, but Hazard, I don't know what happened there with the cross, but he couldn't pull it off. But I wanted him to. We've got ourselves a corner here. Tony Kroos going to whip it in. But uh, Chesney there going to get that one out. Varane now. Okay, Hazard. Look for the pass inside. And Mbappe maybe once again. And asking a lot there to get a goal from that angle. Oh, here we go. Valverde looking for the pass across maybe to Hazard. And it was straight at the goalkeeper. We couldn't make it 2-0. And we're all over Juventus at this point. But let's not write them off. Obviously, early early, day, early days in this game. Let's be honest, only 35 minutes in. A lot can change between now and the final whistle. Valverde, a little chip inside to Mbappe. And Mbappe on the rebound. Okay. And offside, as if. You're joking. And, oh, okay, that would have been great if we could have... Got that classed as a goal, obviously he is offside as well, but um, almost 2-0. A lot of chances here in the first half to make it 2-0. Unfortunately not been able to, but uh, I'm, gonna sh I'm pretty sure Juventus will come out strong in this second half. And that ball's going to run out of play. Juventus here get themselves a corner. The cross is in towards Ronaldo, but they couldn't get anything from it. But there we go, into half time. Still 1-0 up in this game. A good first half, I've got to say. Almost making it 2-0 with a numerous amount of chances. And Mbappe being the goal scorer, well the only goal scorer as well so far in this game. There we go, Mbappe's got it. Looking for the pass to Haaland. Okay, to Hazard instead. And Hazard with a powerful shot makes it 2-0 now at the start of this second half. And that pass was intended to Haaland. I thought he was in more space than Hazard to be fair. But the pass ended up going towards Hazard. But it doesn't matter because he got it in the back of the net anyway. And here we go, take another look at this, Mbappe, like I say, thought it was to Haaland, but um, uh, Hazard got it instead, and he finds the back of the net, and now Hazard's just proving his worth in today's episode, isn't he, of how important he actually is to the team, and that's now another goal added to his Champions League journey, three goals in this season. There we go, Mbappe to make it 3-0, and there we go, Mbappe puts the finish in touch, on this game, it's 72 minutes in, and our number our number seven um, makes it 3-0 now in this game. Two goals for him, one for Hazard. And to be fair, don't, not to any bad words about Haaland, but he's done really well in this game. I think he provides the assist. Oh no, he doesn't provide the assist, but he helps in the build-up play to it. 
And Mbappe finishes it off. And now three goals um, in this game. And how many goals in the Champions League has he scored? Six in the Champions League so far. Just a reminder as well about Juventus in this Cremo save. They sold Dybala to Manchester City. So um, interesting to see that they brought Thomas Muller in. But uh, they're playing him on the right-hand side. And uh, it's just interesting that they sold um, Dybala and didn't really find a replacement. The cross is over. But uh, a poor cross in the, game, in the end. Not long left in this game now. I might make a few changes just to rest some players, really. We've got the 3-0 now. I don't really feel like there's much else that's going to change in this game. Here we go, Moussa. Is he going to do anything with this ball? If Ronaldo scores an overhead kick now, I'll be so annoyed. But um, in, in, you know, in a nice way. But um, they're not going to get anything from it, surely. Thomas Muller. Okay, working it inside now. Now Ronaldo. And it's just very um, not like Juventus going back and forth. And, okay, Ronaldo doing a lot of skills. If you've got competitor mode on, it's um, players like Ronaldo just skill you all day long. But here we go, Douglas Costa, who's come on as well for Juventus. Is he going to do anything? And, again, competitor mode is nice, but they just do a lot of skill moves that is unnecessary. It's not unnecessary because I can't get it off him, but they don't really seem to do much with it. I'd rather him just try to play the pass, get the cross in a lot sooner. And they're just not going to do anything with it. Okay, they're not going to do anything with it. And the full-time whistle goes. And we get the 3-0 win in our first leg against Juventus. Ronaldo's return to the Bernabeu didn't go as expected, I can imagine, for him. But for us, we get all three points. Not three points, my mistake. All three goals. And we get three goals in the first leg as well, which is crucial for the second leg coming up. So here's the round of 16 and how it stands at the moment. After that game, obviously, we won 3-0 against Juventus. Lazio and Bayern ended at 3-3, which is really interesting to see. But I'll have to wait till next episode till we see the outcome of these games. And obviously also next episode we'll face Juventus away from home. So there we have it then, guys. What an episode it has been. Six points in the league and also a win in the Champions League against Juventus. Ronaldo's return wasn't as expected, but then to be fair, we've still got another leg to go against Juventus, which we will see in the next episode when we face them um, away from home. Um, like I say, we also face Atletico Madrid as well in that episode. So quite two big games in that episode, to be fair. And that is in the next episode. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And if you have, don't forget, hit the like button down below on the video. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.